New. New, 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 new. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, first up, this is a revision. 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 It's actually such a revision that it's, I don't even actually call it a revision because a revision. you don't it's even know, you don't even know what changed. So if you look carefully, you'll see the uh, DFN version of this chip, the LC0927092, uh, whatever, uh, is no longer available. Um, we can only get the BGA version. And so I respawn the board for a BGA chip. It's a smaller chip. It's exactly the same component, same pinout, same functionality. It's just... Now it's, now it's just available. <laughs> it's just available. And this is part of the silicon shortage. Next up. Um, next up, we've got these little uh, dust covers. Uh, we had them, we got them a while ago for like USB and USB-C and USB-A and HDMI and micro USB. And people are like, well, I want mini HDMI. So this is the mini yeah. HDMI plug. Fits perfectly into your Pi Zero, which is kind of yeah. like the most handy thing. Yeah, and if you want micro HDMI uh, little dust cover plugs, we've got those too. These are rarer, so they're not as cheap. Um, but you get a pack of ten, so you plug to your heart's content. And if you lose them, no worries, you've got more. Um, actually, wish I could. I, sh I should get like the three point five millimeter plug because, like, yeah. you know, I, I actually get little like a. It's dusty in my room, and like when I plug in my headphones, sometimes it's yeah. like there's a little dust inside. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna pick up some of those for home. Next up. Um, we've also got an update. We uh, finally got in the six pin version of this uh, Pico Blade, I think it's 1.25 millimeter pitch Pico Blade connector, um, you know, A to A type. You know, people are making their own, you know, boards. They want a very nice, durable, extremely compact uh, connector. This will do the job quite nicely with six pins. Next up. Um, we're also carrying, uh, you know, we, we stocked a couple different, I think we stocked the 24 pin version of these extendos and now we have them in 20, 30, 40, sorry, 20, 30, yeah. whatever. I'll, I'll actually, let me look. We've um, got a variety of I choices know, for right. you. Hold on, hold and on. you can see the photos of them as Lady Uta gets these out. Yes. I this time, the... and this time. Okay. All right, you want to show this off? Yes. So, um, I think these are the 20, 30, and 60. Mm -hmm. uh, because, oh, hold on. No, yeah. This a lot. Because we already had the 40 and the 24. Um, so, basically, if you have something with a flex connector um, and you want to extend it, what you would do is you get an FPC cable, which we you can cut an existing FPC cable down or you can get another one. And what's just nice about this is that it has two uh, little ear nubs on each side. And then when you plug them in like this, they're now connected through. And so you can use this to extend your flex circuits. Um, and they do so very compactly. I, I do like how um, huge and adorable these are. So. You have flex cables. If we don't have the exact flex cable you need, uh, check DigiKey. They stock you know flex cables of every sort and kind. Um, we use them for basically if you have a 40-pin TFT cable, 40-pin uh, TFT, you want to extend it farther away. You use one of these plus a um, plain flex cable, like so, and make a little extendo out of them. So um, okay. it's very inexpensive and compact and. Uh, I think I kind of like these more than the PCB versions because they're they don't they don't get in the way they don't snag on anything. All right, next up. Okay, next up from A Tech, um, we've got two of these little suitcasey like storage bins. These are very small storage bins. We also store we also have like these um, snap open boxes, but this is like all in one. Um, so the gray one is got clear tops. I also got labels if you want to label them. Uh -huh. And then we also have a black one, which is anti-static, but the tops aren't clear. So there's kind of two options here for which one you want. Um, anti-static, of course, is better for storing chips, but you, you'll definitely have to label each one because you can't see through it. So let's show on the overhead. So one thing is, is these are smaller than you probably think. Um, well. So they're, they're this, well, I mean, I, I felt like they were larger. Hold on. It's like a slice of a lunchbox. Yeah, it's like a lunch, it's like a lunchbox, yeah. but but slimmer. Like, I mean, they're not that small, but they're yeah. they're definitely compact. Um, and what I do like is that both sides have these little storage bins, uh, and so you know you can see through it, and you can also label them. But it's good for um, a small. Zoom. Let's zoom in here. You want to zoom? 
No, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I nope, 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 nope. I'm, zoom, I'm zooming in. Look out, I'm, I'm in the box. That's... Okay, sorry, I'm zooming out. Okay. Um, okay, so inside here we've got, um, you know, resistors or something. Again, this is not the anti-static box, so you don't want to... Um, I mean, you can store chips in it if, if you know, you don't care, if you're not worried about it. Um, but then you can, you know, it's nice and flat, so you can see all the components. Pick them up. Uh, store them, and I do like that they have nice, uh, big finger-friendly uh, latchy thingies, and then you can hear it latch open and close. Yeah. Uh, connectors, you can store some connectors, but it's not big, so you know you can't put in. Make your own uh, electronic uh, event calendar. As yeah. Folks mentioned. Well, there's this is like for like many months. I don't, I don't remember how many. It's like 150 boxes. I don't remember the number, but it's, yeah. a, it's a large number of containers. Um, so again, this is the clear version, and then. Um, it does the latch closed, and then this is the anti-static version. So, as you expect, um, you can't see through it because it's anti-static plastic, but I think one of these, hold on. Let's see, she said it was in the middle. There it is. It's a little game. A little game. You can sort chips. Yeah. Sorry, this way. Oh, wait, this got flipped. Yeah, I think you flipped it. Or I flipped it. Um, yeah, so um, good for storing chips, and then, of course, you'll want to label it. But uh, Scott recommended these. Um, they're very cute and adorable, and they're great if you don't have a lot of space in your um, workshop, but you want to have a little kit of uh, wow. components, and you don't want to like store all those little bags with, with labels on them. You just take the parts out. And you put them here, and then this is, you know, between these two, like this is kind of all you need to basically have a full yeah. electronic component lab. All right, next up. Okay, um, from Chromatech. Um, so they contacted us, and uh, they make a thing that people have been asking for. So these are momentary and toggle buttons um, that have a NeoPixel in the middle. So if you want to light up the ring, um, you know, you can see there's like three pins in the middle. That's like the normal, like the common, normally open, normally close switch. And then the four pins on the outside are for like the, the NeoPixels as part of the ring. So you treat it like a NeoPixel, you send a NeoPixel data to it and it glows and it glows nice and smoothly. Um, you don't have to worry about PWMing each RGB pin. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to use and uh, it comes with a cable harness. So you see here like, the, you know, there's like this long tail coming out of it. Um, so that tail, you can detach it, but I don't recommend it. Um, instead, you know, keep it attached and you can use that um, to, you, know, you, can, you can detach it, but like instead of soldering to those um, lugs, you can just solder to the ends of these wires and you don't have to end up like soldering to your buttons. So it also makes it easier to do installation. So it's kind of a very fancy um, NeoPixel LED momentary button yeah. or latching button. And then another nice thing is the NeoPixel signal, there's the output too, so you can chain them if you'd like. Okay. Uh, next up, the CircuitPython 7 poster. Um, we're going to hold this up. This is actually another example of like weird supply chain stuff. So you think posters would be easy to get? Uh, we normally have these right before the launch. Um, but this, Everything's these, taking longer. Everything takes longer, slower, but we have it now. and half the amount you expect to get. But this is a really neat poster. Um, if you order one, you might get a surprise. And there might be a previous version poster in there, too. Sometimes we do that if we have any left over. Um, these are limited edition as in like we only make a few we only make one for one. our team. Yes. And then like if anyone else gets them, um, great. But, um, you know, the contributors and the community and, and a lot of the folks, that that's where we uh, send these out to first. But they're available now. And this is the great merge poster is what yes. I'm naming it. Linka. The great merge. The unnamed MicroPython Python. Becoming best friends. We have. We are actually keep, keeping up. Yeah. All right. And the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, the Adafruit team is... This uh, new breakout, the VL53L1X. It's actually a popular sensor. And if you can tell by the part number, I actually designed this a while ago and I kind of sort of forgot to release it. Um, but I finally got around to it again. So the VL531L1X is a time of flight distance sensor. Uh, we've already stocked the VL6180, which is like the first gen, the VL53L0X, which is the second gen, which I think could do up to two meters, and then the 53L1X can go up to four meters. Um, it's quite a powerful and uh, fast time of flight sensor. You can get 50 hertz 
resolution. I think the cone is about uh, 20 degrees. So it's, it's not nearly as wide as like sonar. Like sonar can be, can spread out quite wide. You can get bouncing effects. Um, this is, you know, fairly, fairly precise. Uh, comes on a STEM EQT uh, connector, um, you know, it's plug and play. It, you know, another nice thing about this sensor is it uh, does have a, um, a default address of OX29, but you can change it um, if you connect up the um, shutdown pin. Like it does have the ability, so if you have multiple of them, the, the library that is released actually by ST, thankfully they released an Arduino library, um, can, can remap the addresses. It, it doesn't permanently remap them, so it kind of has to do it every time. Um, but it makes it a lot easier for you to connect multiple of these sensors. So they're great for robotics or um, like human computer interfaces or like any time you want to measure up to four meters of distance um, very accurately, very precisely. All right, do you so want to show a demo? I do, but I need to find where the micro USB cable went. All right, well, while you're doing that... There's one here, but it's... Uh, so many cables. Yes. Yeah, I can find you a cable if you want. No, no, no. Okay. It was right here. Okay. So, hold on. Okay, so of course it's pointing at the floor. So I can point it at the ceiling, which is about... Three is probably hitting that lamp up there. Uh, but you know, four meters away, pointed at me, but it, it updates at 50 hertz. And um, at me, and then I'm gonna make my hand get closer. Okay. Okay. Get closer. Yeah. Get closer. Close. 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 I will say it's not good after you know if it get too close. It's not good under that's like 20 good. millimeters. Wow, that's neat. Like 20. I mean, it says it's closer, yeah. but it's not. I don't think it's rated for that distance. The VL. 6180, I think, is better at low distances, but um, but what this one is good for is very long distances. Again, it can do up to four meters, um, which is cool. It's great for, it's a great upgrade, basically, if you have a, a sonar and you want something with a narrower cone of interest and, um, you know, you still get that four meter distance. Okay. You know, 12 feet or so. And that's new products.